New post-war old Dutch cleanser, famous for chasing dirt, presents... Nick Carter, famous for chasing crime. Every week at this time, two great names are joined as new post-war old Dutch cleanser brings you one of the most resourceful and daring characters in all detective fiction, Nick Carter, Master Detective. Patsy, I'm going to make a date for you. Well, now, a date with whom, Nick? The young boy you met this morning. Oh, but why? I want you to find out why he wouldn't take a tip for delivering a letter to the wrong house. That's why. And now, the case of the professional beggar. Today's adventure starring Lon Clark as Nick Carter. Brought to you by new post-war old Dutch cleanser. At 9.15 this morning, Patsy Bowen rushes down the street toward the old brownstone mansion on the corner of 5th and 4th. She clutches her hat and purse and starts up the front steps, blindly colliding with a young boy who has just come running from the opposite direction. Oh, sorry. Sorry, lady. Are you going in this house? Yes, I work here. Here, lady. Take this, will you? But I... This letter. Here, take it. But what in the world? Will you take this letter, please? It's for this house. Sure, but what's your hurry? I, I, I gotta be going. Hey, wait a minute. I'll give you a tip. Well, I'm not waiting for anything. Oh, for the love of... Say, this isn't for us. This letter's for the house next door. Sonny! Hey! Hey! Oh, well. <laughs> At least it gives me an excuse for being late. Oh, good morning, Patsy. Sorry I'm late, Nick. I'd have been almost on time if I hadn't had a collision when I was coming in. A collision? Yeah, I ran smack into a boy on the steps. He was trying to deliver this letter, but it's not for us. Well, who's it for? It belongs next door. It's addressed to Walter Van Dyke. Golly, that boy was scared. He just shoved the letter into my hand and tore off as if the wolves were after him. Well, the wolves are going to be after us if we don't settle down to work. <laughs> Suppose you take that letter next door and then get busy with your typewriter, huh? You know, Nick, he was such a nice-looking boy. I'd really like to know what frightened him. Comparison of profile photographs of the missing man and the person who claims to be him reveals the claimant as an imposter. Mm -hmm. Note especially the upper helix and the right ear. Hi, Nick. Oh, Hi, Patsy. Oh, Oh, Sergeant, am I glad to see you. Nick's getting to be the worst slave driver. Glad to see you, Maddie, but we're awfully busy. Well, that's okay. You folks go ahead and work. I, I just like to sit here a while. What? Well, what's the matter, Sergeant? Oh, I just came from a stinker of a case, Patsy, and it's depressed me. You go ahead with your dictation, Nick. Why, Maddie, I've never seen you down in the mouth before. Or is this an act? What? Why, Nick, what a thing to say. Well, maybe, but I know Matty. He's used tricks to get me interested in cases before. No, uh, not this time, Nick. Look, Nick, we can't let an old friend down. We've got to cheer him up. No, no, honestly, Patsy, I, I'd rather not talk. Sergeant Matheson, now you tell Papa Nick your trouble. <laughs> Go ahead, Matty, I'll listen. Well, you knew Billy Davis, the assistant DA? Actually, nice boy. Oh, one of the best. He was murdered this morning. Oh, what? No. Yeah, at 9 o'clock this morning. How? He was walking down Holland Street. A black sedan drove by and he got 13 machine gun slugs through him. Oh, gee, that's terrible. Any idea who killed him? No, it was revenge most likely, but a dozen rats hated Davis. Could be anyone. Any witnesses? Oh, a few people saw the killing from the windows, yeah, but not one of them can give us any description of anybody. Mm, What a break. There was only one other witness who could possibly identify the killer. Who was that, you know? No, we can't locate him, Nick. All we know is that it was a boy, a messenger boy. He saw the murder and scooted off in a panic. Um, a messenger boy? Yeah, Patsy. He was carrying a letter. A letter? Was it in a blue envelope? Yeah. The envelope was blue. Then that's it, Nick. Now look, for the love of heaven, Nick, if you got anything, spill it. Matty, you say the murder was at 9 o'clock? Yeah. On Holland Street. Right. Fast running would take a boy from Holland Street to this house in just about 15 minutes. Yeah. Then that's why he was so frightened, Nick. Hey, wait a minute. What is all this? Come on, Maddie. I'll help you find who killed Davis. Good. And we'll start with a visit to Mr. Van Dyke next door. (laughs) Mr. Van Dyke, 
As you undoubtedly know, I'm your neighbor, Nick Carter. Of course, Mr. Carter. So nice to see you. This is my secretary, Miss Bowen. Mr. Van Dyke. And this is Sergeant Matheson of the Homicide Squad. How are you? Oh, this is quite an honor, Mr. Carter. I wondered how long I was going to live next door to a, a, a celebrity without getting acquainted Mr. But... Van Dyke, I, I want to ask a favor of you. Yes. Did you receive... A letter this morning in a blue envelope? Yes, Mr. Carter. Your secretary delivered it to me. Well, you tell me who sent it, please. Why, I don't know. It was from a stranger. You don't know? No, uh, but it's an extremely touching letter, but I don't know the man who sent it. Well, we're trying to locate the boy who delivered it. I'm afraid I don't know him either. Well, may we see the letter? Why, yeah, yes, certainly. I have it right here. There you are. Thank uh, you. Dear Mr. Van Dyke, it's a bitter blow to my pride to be forced to make this appeal to you. I do so only because I'm connected with your family through your second cousin, Emily Gray, because I'm sadly in need of food and clothing. Oh, as I stop it in the bone. Sad the case, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. Very, very sad. Signed, Major Hector Dowd. Any address, Nick? Yeah. 44 Poultry Square. Hey, that's a tough neighborhood. Yes, it's quite sad. Quite sad. Well, thank you, Mr. Van Dyke. You've helped a lot. I don't quite know what I've done for you, Mr. Carter, but you're more than welcome, I'm sure. Thank you. Come on, Maddie. we got work to do. Right with you. So long, Mr. Van Dyke. Bye. Goodbye. Uh, do drop in again, Mr. Carter. Thank you. Well, Maddie, there's our lead. Major Hector Dowd, 44 Poultry Square. Yep, it's a lead, all right. Suppose you get a dragnet going to pick up every crook who might possibly hate Billy Davis enough to kill him. I'll do that. In the meantime, I'll hustle down to Major Dowd and see whether I can locate the boy who delivered this letter. Right, Nick. There's a 20 to 1 chance he's your key witness. Ready, Rodney? Yes, sir. Dear Mr. Hollingsworth. Colin. It is a bitter blow to my pride to be forced to make this appeal to you. Uh, full stop. Capital. I do so only because I am connected with your family through... Uh... Now, nah, one moment, Rodney. Yes, sir. A glance in who's who to refresh my memory. H. H. Uh, Hollingsworth. Oh, yes. Uh, we will continue, Rodney. Yes. Connected with your family through your great aunt, comma, Sarah Crane, comma, Sarah. and because Crane. I am sadly in need of... Idiot, watch your pen, you blotted the page. Ah! Oh, please, Major. You lazy, careless, impudent... You're, you're hurting me, Major. Nothing to do all day but write a few letters and then deliver them, you wretched boy. Do you expect me to write them myself? You know your handwriting is much more genteel than please, mine. Major. Ah! Sorry I made the plot, Major. I'm kind of nervous. After what I saw this morning, it scared me. I... What did you see, you I... blithering ass? I saw Mr. Slade. Slade? The hoodlum who pretends to lord it over this neighborhood? A man called Gas Slade? Yes, sir. I... I saw him kill somebody. What? You what? When I was taking your letter to Mr. Van Dyke, I saw Slade drive up the street in the car and kill a man. Who was the man he killed? I, I, I don't know. But you're sure you saw this slave kill him? But yes, Major, I'm positive. Ah. Yeah. Well, I mean, so. Mm, yes. Rodney, my dear, dear boy. Yes. You know that I have only your best interest at heart, don't you? Well, I... Yes. Now you must listen to me carefully. Yes, Major. You're in great danger, dear boy. We must protect you. Major, Now I... leave everything to me, Rodney. Yours not to reason why. Yours but to do and... Uh, Obey orders. Yes, ma'am. You must scuttle down to the basement of this house at once. The basement? Yes, go at once and remain in hiding there until I come for but you. But, Major, I don't... No arguments, my boy. Obey your commander. Now go. All right, Major. <laughs> now. Slade speaking. Aha, Mr. Slade. This is a neighbor of yours, Major Dowd. The Major, huh? I kind of thought I'd be hearing from you. I've just received a startling piece of information. The boy told you, huh? Yes, Rodney told me all. That's too bad. Too bad for you, sir. Yes. I think if you're wise, you'll come to my quarters at once. We have business to discuss. Your safety and my pocket. All right.
right, Major. Let's get the steel going. I do business wide open, understand? You know all about me. I know all about you and your phony letter racket. Ha! Huh. The kid saw me this morning. He did, sir. Where is he? In a safe place. Oh. You got him hidden, huh? Naturally, I must look out for my for his welfare. Okay. So how much you want for him? Well, uh, come on, how much for the boy? You I ain't worried about. You're old enough to scare. You'll keep your mouth shut. Yes, yes, naturally. But who can scare sense into a kid's head? I gotta close his mouth myself. <gasps> Mr. Slade, you... How much you want for the boy? You're asking me to deliver Rodney over to you, my own flesh and blood. Don't give me that, Major. You got the kid out of an orphan asylum. He's no kin to you. Oh, but even so, Slade... How much? I couldn't possibly... Now, look, if... Hey, maybe that's the kid now. I'll wait in the bedroom. When you figure out your price, send him in to me. I, uh... Just one moment. Major Dowd? Why, uh... My uh, name is Nick Carter. Nick Carter? Mind if I come in? Why, no, not at all. Thank you. Dowd, I need your help. My help, Mr. Carter? Yes. I want to know who delivers your letters. I don't think I understand, huh? Look, Dowd. I know you're a professional beggar, and that your specialty is letters supposedly sent by a poor but worthy gentleman, usually written to rich but not overly intelligent suckers. How dare you, sir? You send those letters by messenger to avoid arrest for illegal use of the mails. Your messenger is a young boy who... Oh, I see. He lives here with you. That's preposterous, sir. I live alone. Oh? Do you make model airplanes, Major? You wear a junior-sized windbreaker, sneakers, and a baseball cap? Well, I... Uh... Major Dowd, I want that boy. Mr. Carter, I don't... He's a sole and vital witness in a murder case. We need his evidence. More important than that, I think his life's in danger. I don't know what you mean, sir. This is what I mean. This boy saw the man who killed Billy Davis, and very likely the killer saw him. And any rat who would cut down an assistant DA with a machine gun wouldn't hesitate to murder a boy. Mr. Carter, you must... Where is he? I can't tell you. You mean you won't? Well, I don't know. You're lying, Dowd. Mr. Carter, you're you... are scared and you're lying. Yeah. Now, wait a minute. Eh? Hey? It's just possible that someone got here before I... Did. I think I'll find Mr. Out. Carter! Come out of there, you. Oh, see, I was just thinking. The way your eyes kept watching this bedroom door, I thought there might be someone in here. I see. It won't be worrying you with this money on the bed, huh? <coughs> money? You usually leave a thousand dollars lying around like this? Well, I can. I... Now, let's get back to business, Dowd. Where's the boy? Mr. Carter, I'll trouble you to hand that money over to me and get out of here. I know nothing about this boy you speak of. Nothing, sir. And I know you're lying. Your touching story of his danger is most pathetic. I'm afraid I'm in no position to prevent the death of a boy I know nothing about. <coughs> Nick turns and leaves the apartment. Major Dowd watches him with quick, cunning eyes. One thousand dollars firmly grasped in his hand. We'll see what happens in just a moment. Now back to The Case of the Professional Beggar. Today's adventure with Nick Carter. Brought to you by new post-war old Dutch cleanser. Outside the tenement in which Major Dowd lives, Nick sprints across the street to a candy store, dashes into a telephone booth, and hastily dials a number, his eyes watching the tenement house entrance through the window. Nick Carter? Hello. Hello, Nick Carter's office. Patsy Bowen speaking. Patsy, this is Nick. Oh, any luck? Not yet. Now, look, Patsy, I want you to come down to Poultry Square right away. Of course, Nick. What's up? Major Dowd's got that boy hidden somewhere down here. I've got to stick to this place until I locate him. And since you're the only one who's seen the boy, I'll need you to identify him for me. Major's still inside. How about the boy? No boy of any description has been through that door since I've been here. You sure the boy lives with him? Positive. Now, we better work fast, Patsy. Yeah. Dowd's been warned. Think he's trying to use the boy for his own advantage. Well, like blackmail, for instance? Exactly. So he's got to be located at once. You have a plan? Yeah. I'm going to phone Major Dowd and get him out of the house. Then you and I go in and look for the boy. Well... If he's in there, we'll take him with us. If he isn't, well, we'll wait for him. All right. There's a phone in the candy store here. I'll call him from there. You keep an eye on the door. Yeah. (laughs) 
This is Major Dowd speaking. Uh, Major Dowd, this is Walter Van Dyke. Walter Van... Oh, yes. Honored that you should call, sir. I was impressed by your letter, Major. I should hate to think that a relation of Cousin Emily was in need. Well, that's very kind of you, sir. Can you come to my house immediately? I have a check for you. Why, Mr. Van Dyke, this is too kind, too kind, sir. I should be delighted to renew my acquaintance with dear Emily's favorite cousin. But it would be difficult for me to come immediately. I have some business at hand. Well, it's a rather large check, Major, and I'm leaving town within the hour. I want to make sure you have no trouble cashing it. Why, this is most generous, sir, most generous. Yes, my business can wait an hour or so. I shall call on you immediately. <laughs> No sign of the major yet, Nick. Give him time. Give him time, Patsy. It's only a few minutes since I called you. Okay, but I wonder what's keeping him. Offhand, I'd say he was putting on his best clothes for the big touch. Nick, look, that big car's going to park right in front of the door. And it's cutting off our line of sight. Now we'll have to move. Nick, look who's getting out. Great Scott. It's Walter Van Dyke. And he's going into the house. Going to see down, confound it. Oh, he'll blow your plan higher than a kite. Yes, I'm afraid you're right, Patsy. Well, all we can do now is sit tight and see what happens. <laughs> oh, let me see. Spat, boulder, stick. All in order. A confounded boy might have polished me boots better, but they'll do. <laughs> well, I should have a flower for my buttonhole. I Joe, now who could that be? Surely not Carter. I'm positive I'd put him off the scent. Coming, coming. Uh, Major Hector Dowd. I am Major Dowd, sir, but I'm afraid you have the advantage of me. I received your letter this morning. I'm Walter Van Dyke. <laughs> Walter that was Van. the most touching letter you sent me. It's bothered me all day. Oh, I decided to come down to see you. But, Mr. Van Dyke, there was no need to make the trip. When I spoke to you on the phone less than a quarter of an hour ago, I'd say... You spoke I... to me on the phone? Certainly. You called me, didn't you? I never called you, Major Dowd. You never... Why, no. I say, I'm afraid I've been duped. Will you excuse me, Mr. Van Dyke? But, Major Dowd, I... Some other time, to... sir, I beg you, some other time... I've just had some shocking information. I must leave at once, Mr. Van Dyke. At once. Nick, Mr. Van Dyke's coming out of the house. And Dowd's right behind him. Oh, he's on to your trick. Oh, naturally. But, but the Major's not getting into the car with Van Dyke. Oh, he looks worried. And he's moving fast. That could mean trouble for the boy. What are we going to do? I think i better follow the Major. Well, what about me? You go up to the Major's apartment, second floor rear. See whether you can find the boy. I'll do my best, Nick. Either you'll find him or Major Dowd will lead me to him. But we've got to be quick about it, Patsy. In another hour, the boy may be dead. <laughs> Anybody home? Hello? Sonny? You in here? Huh. Maybe he's out delivering more letters. I'd better go. <coughs> <laughs> Quite a surprise, huh? Oh, yes. I'm I... looking for a major and I find you. You're Patsy Bowen, huh? Why? Don't I... move, sister. Well, you're Gaslade. I know you. I've you're... been hanging around a back alley waiting for the kid to show up. Then I decided to come upstairs. Do you mean the. The boy who... Saw me knock off Davis. Yeah. Oh. You know, one trouble with a killing is you're never finished. First, I got to take care of the kid. Now you. But I... You're Carter's girl, see? That means you're trouble to me. But, Mr. Slade... Did the major squeal to Carter? Why, I... I, I think you... Sister, I think you better take a walk with me. But I... Yeah, there's a nice, quiet basement in this building. You and me will go down and have a talk. But I... Between us, we'll figure out how I'm going to get rid of the major, the boy, and you. His heavy hand fastened on Patsy's arm like a vice. Gas Slade leads the girl down toward the cellar where, unknown to him, Romney is hiding. We'll see what happens in just a moment.
Now for the conclusion of The Case of the Professional Beggar. Today's adventure with Nick Carter. Brought to you by new post-war old Dutch cleanser. Five minutes after Major Dowd leaves his apartment, he arrives in front of a tenement door across Poultry Square and knocks energetically. Mr. Slade, Mr. Slade, sir, open up. This is Major Dowd. There's been an unexpected crisis, sir. A well-known detective has just entered the scene. If we're to complete our business, it must be done at once. Major Dowd. Who's that? A well-known detective who has just entered the scene. The Carter. Where's the boy, Dowd? I told you. You were I calling think... to Slade. That wouldn't be gas, Slade, would it? Why, I... He left that thousand dollars for you, didn't he? You were going to sell him the witness. Sir, I protest these unwarranted accusations. Where's the boy? I don't know what you're referring to. I think you're going to know very soon, Major. Let's go back to your apartment and see whether we can refresh your memory. Well, ain't this nice and cozy, Miss Bowen? <laughs> we march down into the basement, and who do we run smack into but little Rodney? Now, look, Mr. Slade. So we got my problem all solved, huh? You you haven't got the major. No. That old gimster will keep. He's too scared to do any talking. Well, he won't stay scared long. I'll get him before he gets his nerve back. After I've taken care of you. But can't okay, we... Okay, let's get it over with. Oh, please, Mr. Mr. Slade. Please don't kill us, Mr. Slade. Now, turn around. Look, Mr. Slade. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, brother. If I will get you ten, it's the major looking for Rodney. Yeah, this is my lucky day. Now I get all three of you. Come right in, Major. Slade! I found your little friend Rodney, Major. Now Mr. we can Carter, get... Carter, Slade's here. Mr. Carter! Stop squealing, Gas. You just caught a slug in your hand. Oh, Nick, you did find me. Yes, Betsy, thanks to your cleverness. Nick, this is Rodney. Oh, are you, Mr. Carter? Well, hello, Rodney. You certainly gave us a lot of trouble today. Oh, I'm, I'm sorry, sir. All we wanted to do was tip you for delivering the wrong letter to the right address. That was a lucky break for you. But a bad one for our friend Slade, as he'll soon find out. <laughs> Nick, it turned out to be a nice day after all. Uh -huh. <laughs> Your blue's all gone now, Sergeant. I sure, why not? Mm -hmm. We got gas slate on a murder rap, we got down on a charge of fraud, and we also got the kid away from him. <laughs> yes, Matty. He'll go into the downtown boys club, and he'll be all right there. Yeah, he sure will. Hey, but look, Nick, you said Dowd refused to tell you where he had Rodney hidden. That's right. All right, then how in blazes did you trail Patsy right to the basement? Why, he followed the trail I left for him. Yeah. A trail of what? Trail of lipstick, Maddie. Now, wait a minute. What are you giving me? It's a fact, I... Sergeant. When Gaslade said he was going to take me down to the cellar with him, I got my lipstick out of my bag. Yeah? And whenever I could, I made a mark on the wall with it. Well, now, uh, how come Slade let you do that? Oh, he didn't. What? I refused to go along with him willingly, so he had to drag me. Uh -huh. And I kept struggling and swinging my arms around. And making a mark on the wall or the banister with each swing, eh, Batsy? That's it, Nick. But, Nick, uh, how did you know it was Patsy's lipstick? And how did you know it was a trail you were supposed to follow? Well, Matty, I'll tell you. The first mark was in the apartment living room just inside the door. Mm -hmm. And I knew I hadn't seen it when I was there a short time before. So? It seemed logical to think it meant something. So I followed it. And it did. <laughs> Patsy, I sure am proud of you. That's what I call fast thinking. <laughs> oh, why? Thank you, Sergeant. <laughs> yes, Mary, I just followed the line of red lipstick and caught up with a killer. And while Slade follows a line that leads to the electric chair, he can remember that red stands for danger. <laughs> Nick, what sort of adventure does new post-war old Dutch cleanser have for us next week? Well, Mike, it started when a man was murdered back in the year 1815. And it ended when his great-great-granddaughter was killed in the same room with every door and window locked on the inside. Of course, we had plenty of clues, but they all seemed to prove that the murderer was an Indian chief. Oh, an Indian chief, huh? Uh-huh, but it made things a little difficult, Mike, because the chief had been dead a hundred and fifty years. Uh... Look, I'll wait and listen. <laughs> but what do you call this adventure, Nick? I call it The Case of the Red Arrow. Nick 
Carter, Master Detective, is presented each week at this time by the Cudahy Packing Company. It is produced and directed by Jock McGregor and is copyrighted by Street and Smith Publications Incorporated. Charlotte Manson is featured as Patsy. Ed Latimer plays Matty. Today's script was written by Alfred Bester. Original music is played by Henry Silverne. This program is fictional, and any resemblance to actual persons, living or dead, is purely coincidental. This is Michael Fitzmaurice saying, when minutes count, use new post-war old Dutch cleanser. This is the Mutual Broadcasting System.